the whole life of Jews. And I come from a very religious family myself. And I come from family that they were proud to be Jewish. You know, in the United States, that's one of the big problems. A lot of Jews are not too proud to be Jewish in the United States. As a matter of fact, the only persecution I ever suffered from in my career was from Jews who are embarrassed that I'm so Jewish. That I sound so Jewish, or I look Jewish, or I talk Jewish. Jews get very embarrassed by it. Jews in the United States like to think they're Gentiles, they look like Gentiles, and they get to say, they can't, they can't wait to marry a shiksa to at least be close to a Gentile. Something about a Gentile has to be involved. They're ashamed of their names, they're ashamed of their noses. They tell you how proud they are to be Jewish, they all tell you how proud they are. There is not one Jew in the United States that wouldn't tell you how proud he is to be Jewish. As soon as he finishes My Sunday him, morning class. His name is nose cuts off. Tribute to Jackie, just a little short clip here. Smaller and smaller and smaller. Pretty soon there'll be no nose at all, just a face without a nose. But they're all embarrassed to be Jewish. They are. You tell a Jewish girl in the United States she looks Jewish. Tell her she looks Jewish. She'll stab you right in the heart. The greatest pride is to convince themselves they don't look Jewish. Don't people say I look Hawaiian? Don't I look a little Hawaiian? I think I look more French. Don't I look Dutch? People say I look Spanish. I think I look a combination, Peruvian and Brazilian. What do I do? Then I look, you look Jewish, you crack the end of that. Okay, so there you have it. A little, a little, a taste of uh, of of Dak, Jackie's uh, humor. Uh, let me put this down over here. We do like to always start, as you know, with a bracha, with a blessing. When we say the blessing, we'll also have in mind Bebiankala, Jackie Mason. So let's say uh, let's say a blessing over here. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Shakol Nia Bidvare. So I put together this this tribute somewhat in haste, and um, and uh, you know just to share a little bit about Jackie Mason. I want I want I want to first uh, quote over here. Uh, share a quote from the Gemara from the Talmud. Hold on, you bear with me because it's. It's some uh, various different statements that I have here saved on the computer. So I want to read it. So I want to I want to start off. Some of you might know, I know there's many articles that have been published today about uh, Jackie's uh, background um, and uh, his, his life. This class, of course, being a Torah class, I want to focus a little bit more on, on Jackie Mason's uh, Jewish background, his Jewish pride, maybe a thing or two that you probably will not see in some of the other articles, some stuff that's been shared on WhatsApp groups and so, stuff like that. So I want to share that and then perhaps maybe a mitzvah, because the best way to honor uh, uh, Jackie Mason is by doing something in his honor and his memory, something that was uh, a very interesting thing that was shared and I think you might find it... Uh, um, you might find it surprising, as I did, uh, and maybe a way of honoring him. So, you know, Jackie Mason, his his name, as you know, his Jewish name, was... Um, um, hold on just a moment. Hold on a moment. Bear with me over here. And uh, because I am... Uh, I'll be with you right back. Um, so, sorry for that, for a moment. Um, I want to also, I always forget to do this, I want to put in my, uh, my, uh, my ear, earpods so it, you can hear me perhaps hopefully a little bit better. I hope that works. Okay, sorry for the interruptions. So, <clears throat> his name, his Jewish name as you might know, his real name, his name that he was given at his bris was Yaakov Moshe. He was a Kohen, like I am, a fellow Kohen. He was Yaakov Moshe Kohen Maza. That was the name of the family. Now, Maza, interestingly enough, is an act is an acronym. It's an acronym of in the Hebrew Mizera Aharon HaKohen, from the descendants of Aaron, the priest, the high priest, the brother of Moses. So his last name, Jackie Mason, which he chose as his stage name, but it is from the name Maza, which is an acronym uh, stressing or, or, uh, or highlighting the fact that he is a Kohen and the last name um, tells us such. So <clears throat> that's who Yaakov Moshe HaKohen Maza 
who was born, I'm reading here from Wikipedia, who was born on June 9th, 1928. I don't know what his Hebrew birthday is, but it's not hard to find that if you type it into any Hebrew English calendar, um, what his, what his uh, Hebrew birthday is. And if you read, and a lot of the articles share this with us, if you read about his life, uh, it's really a very interesting life. His father's um, uh, life, he came from a, a family son after son after son of, of rabbis. And as he himself portrayed in the famous uh, 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 Simpsons Award, where he played, uh, you know, both his father, he, the, the story telling of his father and so on, and himself, and how he, uh, as, as he always, as he would say, uh, how he became a comedian is because he was a rabbi, which he was, I believe for, th for three years, I think he was a rabbi in North Carolina. Uh, he had a brother who was a rabbi in New Jersey. I believe he had three other brothers. He was one of four brothers. They all became rabbis, continued their rabbinic tradition. But as he himself uh, uh, joked and said why he became a rabbi, he gave, he gave two reasons. One reason he said was why he became a comedian, stopped being a rabbi. One reason he gave is that I got up there and gave sermons and I put jokes into the, my sermons and people enjoyed the jokes more than they enjoyed the rest of the stuff. So he, he transitioned from being a rabbi into becoming a comedian. Uh, but that's that's you know one of the explanations he gave. Another explanation he gave was, and this is uh, quoting his words. He said like this: He actually became a comedian after his father passed away. He 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 received smicha from Rav Moshe Feinstein. Rav Moshe Feinstein was was you know one of the greatest halachic authorities of of of, of the previous or our generation. Uh, passed away in the nineties, I believe, in nineteen nineties in in, in their. The, or the late 80s, actually. Uh, the mid to late 80s. Now, Rabbi ya Jackie Mason, or Rabbi Yaakov Moshe, received his smich, his rabbinic or, or, ordination from him. Um, so he was a serious rabbi. And uh, he. You, this is a quote from uh, something uh, from Jackie. He says, so he says I, st I started telling, this was, he was, a, he was a rabbi in Weldon, North Carolina. Um, he says, I started telling more and more jokes and after a while, a lot of Gentiles would come to the congregation just to hear the sermons. And he says, three years later, after his father died, he resigned from his job as rabbi in synagogue to become a, a comedian because he says, somebody in the family had to make a living. <laughs> you know, his brothers all became rabbis, his father was a rabbi, and I guess, uh, as he himself said, he said, you know, he said, uh, he said, the love is very important, the beautiful thing in life. Money is a beautiful thing in life. He says, the good news is I love money. So uh, these, are, these are some of uh, a description of Jackie's humor. Oh, something that you <clears throat> might not know is that there is actually a Sefer. There's a Jewish Torah book published by his father. You could, it's actually available in Hebrew, in its original uh, uh, Hebrew in Hebrew, hebrewbooks.com, I think is what it's called. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a site that collects many, many uh, Jewish books, especially those who are that are out of, uh, out of print. And in that, um, in in that, in the Sefer, in this Jewish Torah book that his father published, there is uh, several pages. Let me see if I have it here in front of me. There are several pages that his father published and the father writes over there as an introduction this is the drasha this is the torah drasha this is the torah um uh speech that my son he mentions or yaakov moshe gave for his bar mitzvah now <clears throat> the speech is a very deep scholarly torah speech it's not like the more sort of modern uh, uh, bar mitzvah speech, you know. Thank you, all my cousins, for coming, and, and etc. This is not to not to not to uh, dismiss anybody's bar mitzvah speech. It's all wonderful and fantastic, but this is a real Talmudic, what we call more a pilpul, a real deep Torah discussion, uh, and it talks about the mitzvah of tefillin. Uh, about tefillin at night, and if you wore tefillin at night, you have to say a blessing the next day uh, when you have the tefillin on, perhaps. And, and a discussion whether there's an obligation to wear film also at night, which we do not do. We don't wear film after sunset. But uh, how? What is the biblical uh, um, 
the biblical uh, source for that and whether and whether if somebody wore tefillin for 24 hours do they have to make another blessing the next day since since by biblical source you might be allowed to wear tefillin and therefore you shouldn't have to make a blessing the next day and he goes into a, a, a in-depth long discussion comparing it to other mitzvahs you know this is not the Jackie Mason you know it's a really deep uh, uh, Talmudic and halachic discussion which we'll get back to maybe in, in a little bit later. So, uh, <clears throat> having said that, I also want to c- quote over here a uh, another interesting, I don't know, this is from a book. This is a WhatsApp that I got this morning. I don't know which book this is from. It doesn't say the origin because it's just one of these little WhatsApp clips. And this is a, a, a nice encounter that Jackie uh, had with the Rebbe, Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson. And um, he says he says the following. He says and this is this is uh, this is I'm reading here from this WhatsApp, which is a quote from a book. Don't know which book. If somebody who's watching knows where this book is from, you know, please share. He says in virtually every dollars encounter. Let me give just a quick background. The Rebbe would give dollars every single Sunday to thousands of people. Uh, he would give a dollar, and the purpose of that was, as the Rebbe himself said, was to make people a message, a messenger to give it to charity. And that was a way of the Rebbe perpetuating um, mitzvahs, specifically the mitzvah of charity. And there was also a time as thousands of people came by, and it would last for hours, where the Rebbe would have some sense like a quick interaction. People would ask blessings. People would come out crying. People would come. You know, there was there was just there was just a lot going on in that couple of seconds that you went by the Rebbe. So <clears throat> with that background, I want to read the following. In virtually every dollars, in quotes, encounter, the Rebbe could be seen trying to utilize the few seconds available to squeeze a little more faith out of a soul and to direct it to a tangible goal. Comedian Jackie Mason, for example, recalled how the Rebbe would encourage him to see his success as a divine blessing. I'm I'm interrupting the, the, this quote here. We all know, every, anybody who's especially a fan of Jackie Mason knows Jackie Mason's history. He's had his struggles. We know that for 20 years, uh, Jackie was sort of uh, um, banned, was ostracized from the, from the, uh, from the uh, stage because of that famous and mistaken, from that alleged account where Ed Sullivan claimed that Jackie uh, stuck out his middle finger to him. Um, and Jackie vehemently denied it and eventually won his case in court and Ed Sullivan apologized to him but Jackie Mason used uh, 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 you know Jackie Mason was a, as of course a master of words and he said one minute one minute that 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 had its consequences I'm, this is the I'm not quoting his exact words but one minute that lasted for 20 years one, uh, a one minute encounter that 20 years had a consequence for 20 years he was off stage until uh, he was became back popular especially when once he came out with the show the world the world according to me I think was the, the name of the show uh, and that was a, a major hit that won many awards so the Rebbe would encourage him to see is the going back here to the quote as I'm reading when I went to see him on Sunday dollars blessings line is what he calls it Mason said, the Rebbe always asked me, how's show business? And I would always tell him that I was a hit and things were going better than ever. This goes back, this goes back, the Rebbe's dolls were basically in the 80s and the early 90s. And, and, I'm, a, and I'm, I am giving my commentary that this was just as he was getting back into the show business and the Rebbe was showing his concern. Then the Rebbe, back here reading, the Rebbe then always said, do you attribute it to yourself or to God? Smiling, I'd say, Jackie Mason says, I'd say, Rebbe, if I attribute it to myself, you'd throw me out of here. So even if I believe that I'm, even if I believe that, I'm not going to tell you. Jackie Mason, even in his respectful way to the Rebbe, using his humor then Jackie Mason says I get real serious and I'd say of course Rebbe it's because of God and the Rebbe said in perfect English 
that's worth a dollar and a blessing. And the Rebbe gave me a dollar. So this is a quote from a book that's quoting Jackie Mason. I thought I'd share that as part of our sort of Jewish tribute to Jackie Mason. I want to also, you know, mention a couple of other things. Uh, there was a very, you know, there's many, many articles, um, especially today. Uh, one of the articles that I, I liked was an interview that Jackie did years ago. Uh, years ago, actually, what year was this? I don't think it was that long ago. Well, years ago. It was about 10 years ago, I, I think. And um, and it was a, an interview that he did with, with, uh, with the Tablet magazine. Questions and answers, and I want to read, you know, a couple, and you're welcome to ask me, I'll, I'll gladly share the article, there's a, you know, a lot of interesting stuff, I mean, over the years, you know, Jackie got himself into some trouble too, because of his humor style, uh, you know, some of the jokes that he said in the later years, trust me, he couldn't say as a rabbi on the pulpit, uh, we at one point here at Chabad years ago were thinking about bringing him out here to, uh, you know, just uh, as a form of entertainment and so on. And we were concerned about some of the off caller jokes. Um, he, in talking, I believe this is sort of memory, this goes back years ago, in talking with his uh, agent, we were assured that he would, uh, he would you know, keep his jokes clean. I don't know if that uh, would have, would have uh, if he could have honored that. Uh, but uh, at the end, we didn't bring him out. It was just a little too pricey. He was, he was big and famous at the time, and uh, the amount of money was, was beyond what we felt we could, we could spend. But uh, here, getting back here into the, this, uh, this tablet uh, article, a couple of questions and some answers and maybe one or two quotes uh, and, uh, that I want to share over here. So one of the questions that the interviewer, uh, who, uh, who it was, uh, who's the interviewer here? Just I do like to give uh, credit to the interviewer by David uh, Avanir. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He says like this, he says, I met Jackie Mason for the first time a few months ago at a kosher Great American Health Bar on West 57th Street in Manhattan. My friend Mike Fiorito went up to him and told him a joke. He said, excuse the language, I'm just quoting over here. I, 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 uh, he says, what kind of a schmuck tells me a joke? Mason said, I introduced myself, gave him my card. A month later, he called me. We've been schmoozing together ever since. Okay. So one of the questions over here asked, because again, this is a Jewish tribute in memory of the wonderful soul of Jackie Mason, and I, I will also explain in addition why I say wonderful, based on a Talmudic, a very fascinating Talmudic story, which I will share soon. What does it mean to you to be a Jew? So <clears throat> it means, this is Jackie Mason's answer, means that chances are you are going to be a more intelligent person. Jackie was not never politically correct. And you'll have more decency and you'll help people whether they deserve it or not. And no matter what crime any person from any denomination <laughs> commits, somehow you'll always convince yourself it's your fault. But there's a lot. There's a lot in that one answer. There's a lot of it. There's a lot in that answer. You think about it on your own. You know, we have limited time, but there's a lot in that answer. Um <clears throat> Next question. Why have you stayed so identifiably Jewish in your accent and your subject matter? As I didn't emphasize, this is Jackie's answer, I didn't emphasize my Jewishness because I wanted to. I just happened to have been raised in a family where everybody happened to talk like this. So why would I talk like somebody else? And it is not true that my act is about Judaism, that my act is about all kinds of people. I sound so Jewish, people are so stupid. Okay. I don't want to read the whole thing, but <clears throat> I'm bringing this up is because, you know, he was very proud of who he was as a Jew. He didn't hide it. In fact, <clears throat> what some of you might not know is that, that there were people in the show business that suggested that he get training. He get training to change his accent so it shouldn't sound so Jewish, and he refused he was very proud of who he was as a Jew, and it expressed itself in various ways. 
And I want to read over here. <clears throat> I want to read over here. Uh, is it in this article or did I see it somewhere else? Hold on a moment. Bear with me. Listen to this. Hold on. Here, listen to this. This is the question. I, I want. This is talking about a, a, a true tribute to Jackie Mason, to Yanka. So, <clears throat> listen to me over here. Um, this is the question. Tell me about. Now he was a radical. He was a radical, and I, I don't. I don't like to use the word radical. I must say, I don't really like to use the word radical. Um, <clears throat> I. Uh, I, uh, because, you know, who decides who's a radical, whose opinion is radical, whose opinion is not radical, is my opinion different than yours, and that's why it's radical, is it, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. At the same time, I guess we sometimes talk about uh, certain people who are radical where, where it might be totally off the, uh, a, a question for another time, we'll, we'll leave that over here, let's, I mean, we'll leave that for another time, <clears throat> but... You know, he was. I'd rather. I'd rather uh, uh, present it this way. He was very strong pro-Israel, um, <clears throat> almost to the to the uh, Kahana Mayor Kahana's uh, way of thinking and and approach and so on. And he did not. He did not hide that. But here, listen to this story. Tell me about your experiences going to Israel during the Gulf War. I know you almost got killed. The interviewer says, why did you go? What were the soldiers' reactions? This is the question, and this is Jackie's answer. And these are the true tribute to Jackie Mason, in addition to some other things. But this is important. This is really important. It goes to express the soul and the real beliefs of this, of this man who passed away today and who brought fun and laughter and joy to so many. <clears throat> the Jews were all nervous, reading for the article, and scared about what might happen because nobody was able to predict the level of danger that would be involved. This is during the Gulf War when scuds were being uh, uh, hurled, were being shot at Israel. All they knew was that Arabs had scud missiles. That uh, <clears throat> all they knew is that Arabs had scud missiles that could come down at any time and place. The Israelis had some kind of system that was supposed to intercept and block those missiles, but. We didn't know how effective they were. This is, goes back, I think, to the the uh, the uh, Gulf War. I think it was in '91, I believe. How effective? So, but we didn't know how effective they would be and what would happen to the country. There was a real fear. I remember this personally. Many of you listening, I'm sure, remember this as well. That they could wipe out the whole state of Israel. Everybody in Israel got panicky, and a lot of people started leaving the country. Take a moment off over here. I want, I want to interject. I remember this. I remember many people coming to the Rebbe at the time, the dollars, and all asking, should their kids leave Israel? Some of the kids were in yeshiva. Should they travel to Israel? And so on. Um, <clears throat> what happened is that uh, the Rebbe encouraged everybody to go to Israel, those who were going, and no one should leave Israel. So that's a little interjection in, 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 in the same thinking over here with Jackie Mason. So listen to this. Back to the article. Everybody in Israel got panicked and a lot of people started leaving the country. When I took the plane coming in, the plane was packed with people coming out. When I told the Israelis I was coming, they looked at me like I was a maniac. They didn't know if I was such a great patriot, patriot or just a nutcase. The Israeli embassy initially discouraged me from going because they couldn't imagine something coming into Israel at a time like that. But I was insistent. I felt it was a moral obligation for a Jew to show support at a time like that when the fate of the state was imperiled. So this is a, a, a quote from Jackie Mason. And this is, the, this is part, of, part of the true tribute to who Jackie Mason was. <clears throat> now, of course, Jackie Mason's known... For not so much his political views, which I'm sure were controversial and some disagreed. He was a strong conservative. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, when you come to politics, people have very, very strong opinions and many disagreed with his political uh, uh, views. 
But in terms of his comedy, it was brilliant. It was uh, <clears throat> it, it, it was u- unique, of course, uh, and he was he was uh, uh, brave, uh, etc. I'm not here to discuss his 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 uh, his his comedy. There's greater experts. There are greater ex- experts than me uh, on his comedy. But I do want to highlight the merit, the merit, the schus from a Jewish Torah perspective in, uh, in, 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 in bringing so much joy to people. I mean, uh, you know, joy and laughter and jokes and humor is a very, very Jewish thing, starting from the first Jewish child who was named by our patriarch and matriarch, Abraham and Sarah, was called Yitzchak. Yitzchak was called, as the Torah late, relates, because Sarah says, and, and, and both Sarah and, uh, and Avram say that the Kola Shomea Yitzchakli, whoever is going to hear, uh, says Sarah that I'm giving birth to a, to a uh, at this age, at this miraculous age, will laugh. And the first Jewish born child, Isaac, is named Yitzchak, which is laughter. So laughter and joy is very, very much a Jewish thing, and it's a healthy thing, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And I want to quote a story from the Talmud. The Talmud over here, let's go, let me find it. Bear with me. Bear with me. Here it is. <clears throat> so this is a story from the Talmud in Mesechtet Ta'anit, Tractate Ta'anit. The Talmud has the following story. Rabbi Broika, okay, Rabbi Broika of Bechazoi, says the Talmud, used to frequent the marketplace of Be'lefet. I don't know exactly where in Israel this is, um, <clears throat> but a place called Be'lefet, and he used to frequent the marketplace. Elijah the prophet frequently appeared to him. We are told by tradition that men of great spiritual holy stature would have what's called Gilui Eliyahu would have re- revelation of Eliyahu there's a sefer called Tonad Ve'Eliyahu that according to some is attributed to Elijah the prophet and teachings of Elijah the, the book the sefer the holy book is available today uh, you could buy it based on the teachings that Elijah shared with with some of the sages once Rabbi Broca said to him to Elijah the prophet who appeared to him he says, in the marketplace. Now, a lot of these stories are cryptic and metaphoric, but nevertheless, the message is there. One Torah broker said to him, is there anyone in this marketplace who is destined for the world to come, for Olam Haba? Elijah, the ans- Elijah answered, no. Then, two men entered the marketplace. Elijah said to Rabbi Broika, these two are destined for the world to come. Rabbi Broca, continues the Talmud, went over to them and said, what do you do? They said, we are comedians. We give cheer to those who are depressed. You hear? That is what they do and that is why they merit the world to come, unlike all the other people who are in the marketplace at that time. Also, whenever we see two people involved in a quarrel, we try to make peace between them. This is the end of the Talmud. It's such a beautiful and powerful Talmud that I remember actually the Rebbe quoting this Talmud and sharing this Talmud, that the only merit that these people had, I'm sure they did other good things, was the fact that they bought joy and laughter to people, especially those who were depressed, and um, and brought peace amongst people. And perhaps you could put those two things together. They perhaps used humor to bring pe- peace between people who quarrel. And I think that with this thought, <clears throat> and one other additional thought, we will conclude our tribute, our short tribute didn't have enough time to do as much research as I was of lot would have liked. Uh, but our short tribute to a giant in his field, to Jackie Mason, and truly brought laughter and joy to millions of people. 
and you know, I would I would say that the best way in, in, in Jewish thought and approach, we don't just say things. It always has a, a we always want to uh, bring about what's called in in Hebrew an ubachein, and therefore what. And what do we do with it? And how do? And the best way to uh, to honor a deceased soul is to do something good, do a mitzvah in their memory. So I suggest two mitzvahs over here, two mitzvahs based on what we've we've just spoken about. <clears throat> One mitzvah, of course, is that try to make a point to uplift people, to make them feel better, especially when you see people who are down and sad. You know, there's there's a famous uh, Torah uh, thought about about Yosef, uh, Yosef HaTzadik, Joseph, when he's in prison, um, <clears throat> he sees the two ministers of Pharaoh who are there, they're locked up because they did something against Pharaoh, Pharaoh locks them up, and the Torah describes, he looks and he sees, Vihinam zo afim. he sees that they are bitter, they are sour, they're sad, they're depressed, and he asks them what's the matter, and as a result of him going over and offering his help, he eventually gets out of prison, becomes the viceroy of Egypt, and eventually that leads, in one way or to another, to the rest of Jewish history and much of the good that came out of just one story, of one one moment where Yosef pays attention and tries to bring joy to someone who is in prison, where he could, and he is at that point, he is the, sort of the, the overseer of the entire prison system, uh, dungeon, and he could just totally, you know, they're, they're nothing, they're nobody. But no, he pays attention and he asks them why are they sad. So it is such an important uh, lesson and tribute and mitzvah that we could do in memory in honor of Jackie Mason is every one of us have the ability to have some humor or some positivity, some uplifting word that we could say to someone in general and especially to someone that we see who perhaps is distraught or going through a stressful period and so on. So that is one important and amazing positive tribute that we could give to Yaakov Moshe HaKohen Mazo to Jackie Mason. And number two, and this is for the men listening, is that I shared before Jackie's uh, Bar Mitzvah drasha, Jackie's Bar Mitzvah deep uh, insightful Talmudic and halachic discussion um, I, I, on the mitzvah of tefillin, and he gives a long dis- dissertation on tefillin. I recommend, and there is no no question that this would tremendously benefit Jackie's neshama, Jackie's soul. If you put on tefillin every day, that's wonderful. If you don't put on tefillin, uh, go ahead and put on tefillin for Jackie's neshama, for Jackie's soul. Do it. If you want us to help you do it, we'll gladly help you do so. Uh, We actually have a campaign that anybody who commits to putting on tefillin daily, we will pay for 75% of the price of tefillin. A a, a proper kosher pair of tefillin is approximately $400. Chabad will sponsor 300 of the 400 so that uh, it makes it possible for you to uh, to have tefillin. And if you commit to do so every day other than Shabbat and Yom Tov, we will sponsor the tefillin, 75% of it. The reason why we do not sponsor 100% of it is because we want it to be valuable and something that, that you really cherish and so on. Uh, <clears throat> so we have some sponsors who, who help with this project. So these are the two mitzvahs. Mitzvah one is see, make an effort to bring joy both to yourself and to those around you, uh, whether it's joy, whether it's positivity, an encouraging word. That's a wonderful way to, to honor uh, and, and benefit Yaakov Moshe Hakohen's soul, Neshama. Don't remember his father's name right now offhand. And number two, if you put on tefillin, the next time you put on tefillin, have him in mind. If you don't put on tefillin, Put on tefillin at least once, once, in honor of Yaakov, of Jackie Mason, in honor of his bar mitzvah drasha. If you want to know more about the, the, his drasha, it's a very deep, uh, uh, in detail uh, drasha 
on the Mitzvah film. I didn't get a chance to, I just skimmed on it very, very quickly. Didn't really learn it. So that's that's the, the tribute over, over here for for the soul of Yaakov Moshe. There's a lot more that can be said about him. It, it's available online on Jewish, uh, in Ju- Jewish uh, uh, websites, etc. But um, may his soul be blessed. May may the merit of of him bringing laughter to so many. May we merit the times that the prophets have promised where there will be joy and laughter for the entire world with the coming of Mashiach uh, speedily nowadays where we will not know as the prophet says <laughs> the prophet will wipe away tears from every Hashem Elohim will wipe away the tear from every face with the coming of the righteous of Mashiach with the realization of what our prophets have promised us uh, for a world as it's meant to be a world of goodness and kindness and laughter and joy and holiness and mitzvahs, etc., etc. May it be so speedy nowadays. Thank you for watching. Please share these words of Torah with others.